I'm a clinician and a heart failure investigator, and uh, so my interest in coming to ESC is there's such great science and such great clinical science being presented at the meeting. Uh, and today there were a number of really important clinical trials of which uh, the um, Danish trial was uh, was one of them. Uh, Danish was a trial that was about using uh, uh, defibrillators uh, in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy. Most of the data on defibrillators has been uh, in groups of patients uh, who've had ischemic heart disease and there the defibrillators are clearly beneficial. Uh, up until recently there's not been uh, a whole lot of information in patients with just dilated cardiomyopathy and so Danish really was a large trial in patients with uh, dilated cardiomyopathy uh, and the major finding of the study was that there was no overall improvement uh, in uh, overall mortality for patients who received the defibrillator. The secondary endpoints were changes in cardiovascular death that also was not impacted but another pre-specified secondary endpoint uh, was sudden cardiac death and that was decreased by about 50%. So I think the results of the trial are, are sort of a glass half empty and half full. It didn't meet its primary endpoints, which obviously is a disappointment. However, it did show that uh, in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy, there is a 50% reduction uh, in sudden cardiac death, uh, which I think is an important finding. The other important finding uh, is that, and this was pre-specified in the trials, that the ICD therapy was more efficacious uh, in patients who were younger. Uh, and currently, in many times, we we often think twice about putting defibrillators in older patients. I think this will really help us to have better discussions with older people that it may not benefit them. So the reason why I think there, there may be uh, some consternation in the field is that for many of us, uh, we've uh, tacitly believed that the defibrillators were going to be beneficial in patients with dilated cardiomyopathy and it's really based on very uh, little data but I think so, so one reason why new finding can sometimes be upsetting is, is that they, they challenge the prevailing dogma. This I think will challenge the prevailing dogma. Currently uh, defibrillator use uh, is a 1A recommendation in the American heart failure guidelines and it's a 1B recommendation in the European guidelines based on the results of this study, I think it will change. Uh, the other thing, as I said, it's, it's a glass, glass half empty and a glass half full. If you're a clinical trialist, you say the trial was neutral or negative and didn't meet its primary endpoint. If you're a clinician who tries to take care of patients and you see that there's a 50% reduction in sudden cardiac death and it appears to be beneficial in younger patients, that's news that, that you can use to take better care of patients. So, but again, technically the trial is neutral or as people want to say negative, but, but in, you know, from a clinical standpoint, the device does work, it just doesn't work in everybody. So for those patients we've been putting defibrillators in anyway, uh, oftentimes as, as patients get older, uh, it's been harder and harder to recommend putting in defibrillators. Uh, oftentimes if the defibrillator goes off, uh, either appropriately or inappropriately, it's scary for older folks. Um, and so, but there's never been an age point or a cutoff. It's just been your own gestalt about uh, what, what, what age a patient was biologically. The results of this trial, there's a pretty clear demarcation. It was pre-specified at age 68. So my guess is that <clears throat> in patients who are older than 70 years, we may be more conservative about recommending ICDs. Whereas in the younger population, it won't be that we're starting it because we haven't been doing it before. I think we'll be probably not putting as many defibrillators in older patients based on the results of the Danish trial. And that may be a good thing too, because as I said, it's uh, it, it, the one of the other things that was interesting in Danish, there was 5% complication rate for implanting the devices. That's relatively high. Uh, and if you're an older person, that can be relatively scary. So I think we, we learned a lot from the trial. I think uh, it was a well done trial. Um, and I think it will change the strength of evidence. But I don't think we're going to stop putting defibrillators in people that need them. So a lot of it is just infection uh, from putting the devices in. Uh, but again, is it's uh, the pacemaker infection or a defibrillator infection is a serious infection. Sometimes you have to pull the leads out and extract the leads, which is also uh, uh, potentially a, a very dangerous um, uh, lead extraction. So we, we learned a lot about what not to do from this trial.
Uh, I think the defibrillator uh, right now, as of today, is the major uh, change. Uh, there were a lot of uh, neutral or negative uh, studies on home monitoring, but, but we hadn't been doing extensive home monitoring anyway uh, at, at Washington University. We do do some, but not a lot, uh, so that won't change my practice. But I, I think the, the Danish trial opened my eyes about what I thought I knew. Uh, they didn't really know as well as I needed to.